Welcome to Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack, a teaching ministry that focuses on God's unconditional love and grace. I grew up with the knowledge of God and the presence of God, but I knew I needed to know Him better. I've always thought of God as a harsh father. His teachings just really brought me back to, you know, knowing who God is and recognizing it. And now, here's Andrew. Welcome to our Friday's broadcast of the Gospel Truth. Today is my last day to be teaching on the subject of abortion. What does the Bible say about abortion? And I've got a DVD series, that, just one DVD in here that covers this week. It was taken from my TV programs. This is a CD that was taken from my TV programs. And this is a USB that was taken from these programs. And I encourage you to get this because what I've been doing is going through Scripture and giving you answers to this subject of abortion. Most Christians, I don't think, know what the Word of God has to say. So that's the reason I've been teaching on this. And we also have this bonus USB, and this is 11 weeks worth of teaching that I've done where I interview people on the subject of abortion, people who have survived abortion, uh, people who are on the forefront of fighting against abortion, Melissa Oden, Kristen Hawkins, Marjorie Danden Feltzer, and just so many other people. And anyway, this... You need to know how to answer these things. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 15 says that we are supposed to be able to give an answer of the hope of the calling that lies within us. And most Christians don't even know what the Word of God says about abortion. And if they do know it, then they're afraid to talk about it. And I'm going to try and cover that here today and, and, ask, and answer why we should be speaking out. On this, but let me. I've, I've touched on this. Let me just go back through. Yesterday, I was talking about Mary conceiving Jesus, and at the moment of conception, the moment that the Holy Spirit overshadowed her, and that she conceived the physical body for Jesus in her womb. From that moment, that was Jesus. That was not a hunk of flesh. That wasn't a part of Mary's body. That was the sinless Son of God. And so is every single child that is born. Life begins at conception. And so we've already talked about that part of it. Here in verse 38, it says, And Mary said, Behold the handmaiden of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. That's where she received this proposal and conceived uh, Jesus in her womb. And in verse 39, it says, And Mary arose in those days and went into the hill country with haste into a city of Judah. You know, this is a separate issue, but I'm just going to mention this real quickly. But did you know that there is not one single scriptural account that Mary told Joseph what had happened to her? I personally, I can't say that she didn't. I can't say that she did. But since it's not mentioned in scripture, I would tend to believe that she never told Joseph about what had happened in the angel appearing unto her. How could you go tell your fiance, I'm pregnant, but honest, I haven't been unfaithful. I, I just can't even imagine. How in the world do you go about doing this? It says that immediately after she humbled herself and received the word, it says in verse 39, And Mary arose in those days and went into the hill country uh, with haste into the city of Judah and entered into the house of Zacharias and saluted Elizabeth. And as you continue to read this, she stayed with Elizabeth. It was the sixth month of Eliz Elizabeth's pregnancy, and she stayed with her until the birth of John the Baptist, nine months. So three months she stayed there until the ninth month when John the Baptist was born. So that means that when she came back, if you read over in Matthew's account of Joseph, and Mary, it says that Mary was found with child. It didn't say that she explained that she had a child and told Joseph about it. She was found with child, and because of that, he thought she had been unfaithful during these three months that she was gone to be with Elizabeth. When she came back three months pregnant, she was already showing that she was pregnant, and he was going to divorce her and put her away privately. And an angel came unto him in a dream and spoke to him and told him that the thing that was conceived was of the Holy Ghost, told him that he would name the child Jesus. And if you, if you interpret it the way I'm talking about, I can't for sure say this the way it was, but you can't say it wasn't. The Scripture doesn't say that she told him. And if it happened the way I'm describing, well, then, man, that makes things a lot more understandable because if she had told him that this was all uh, from an angel 
uh, taking the word and impregnating her. Well, then that could have forced him to have that dream. He could have written that dream off as, well, this is what Mary told me, and he could have written it off. And in the dream, he was told that the child's name would be Jesus. If Mary didn't tell him any of this, and if he had this dream separate from Mary, then when they came together and they shared, man, what a great confirmation that would have been to Mary and to Joseph. I believe that that's the way it happened. It doesn't say that she told Joseph what had happened. So she just went into the hill country. She saluted Elizabeth, and it says, And it came to pass that when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary, the babe leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. Did you know part of the prophecy that had been given to Zacharias in verse 15? This is Luke chapter 1 and verse 15. It says, talking of the child that would be born to Zacharias and Elizabeth. He shall be great in the sight of the Lord and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink and shall be filled with the Holy Ghost even from his mother's womb. So it was prophesied he would be filled with the Holy Spirit. This had never happened before. There was people that had the Holy Spirit occasionally come in them, but not abide with them. To be filled with the Holy Spirit from the mother's womb, this was unique. And I believe it happened right here when Mary saluted Elizabeth, she said, The babe leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost, and she spake out with a loud voice and said... Now, remember that they didn't have communication the way that we have it today. And so it's not like Mary, after she had had this encounter with the angel, and the angel told her that Elizabeth also was pregnant in her old age. It's not like she texted Elizabeth to find out, was it true? No, they didn't have the same communication. It just says she arose and went. And I believe that Elizabeth, there was no way for her to know any of these things. But the moment that she heard the sound of Mary's greeting, the babe leaped in her womb. The Holy Spirit, she was filled with the Holy Spirit. And this was a prophecy. And what a confirmation this was to Mary. Again, she had had this encounter with the angel, but nobody else was around. At this time, there wasn't another person that knew about this. And for her to walk in and just greet Elizabeth and have Elizabeth start speaking through the Holy Spirit and say, You are the mother of my Lord. She was still a single woman. Nobody except the angel knew that she had been impregnated. And yet here's Elizabeth confirming all of this. Man, I can just see the Lord using this to confirm and uh, solidify these things in Mary. And so she said with a loud voice, Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. And whence is this to me that the mother of my Lord should come unto me? Think of what kind of a confirmation that was to Mary. For lo, as soon as the voice of thy salutation sounded in mine ears, the babe leapt in my womb for joy. And blessed is she that believed, for there shall be a performance of those things which were shown her from the Lord. Notice that Elizabeth said that as soon as she heard the voice of Mary, the babe leaped in her womb for joy. It says this was the sixth month of pregnancy. So here is John the Baptist being filled with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit did not fill just flesh. It didn't just fill uh, a part of Mary's, I mean, of Elizabeth's body. This was a separate person. He was filled with the Holy Spirit in his mother's womb, and he leapt for joy. Here is a child in the womb experiencing joy. That is a child. When you abort a child, you are abort aborting a person that can feel things, feel pain, feel joy and happiness. It's a live human being. You know, I've used a lot of scripture this week and quoted a lot of different things. I encourage you to please get these CDs, DVDs, USBs that we're offering. But you need to get hold of these truths and you need to let people know in love. It says in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 15, speaking the truth in love, we grow up unto all maturity in the Lord. But you have to speak the truth to people. Somehow or another, things have been perverted today to where they there's people that watch my program on a regular basis, and you've received from me on other issues, but now you think you shouldn't be speaking about this. This is offending people. This is hurting people. You're going to be criticized. It's only the truth that you know that sets you free, and you have to speak the truth in love. 
AND I'M TELLING YOU, it's, uh, IT'S WRONG THE WAY THAT SOMEHOW OR ANOTHER CHRISTIANS HAVE BELIEVED THAT WE SHOULDN'T EVER OFFEND ANYBODY. YOU KNOW, JESUS' DISCIPLES CAME TO HIM AND SAYS, DON'T YOU REALIZE THAT THE SCRIBES AND PHARISEES WERE OFFENDED BECAUSE YOU SAID THESE THINGS? AND HE SAID, SURE THEY ARE. THEY'RE THE BLIND, LEADING THE BLIND. THEY'RE GOING TO BOTH FALL INTO A DITCH. HOW OFFENSIVE WOULD THAT BE TO PEOPLE TODAY TO SAY THAT ANYBODY WHO CRITICIZES YOU, THEY'RE BLIND. THEY JUST CAN'T SEE ANYTHING. JESUS SAID, YOU GO TELL THAT OLD FOX, HEROD. HE CALLED THE PHARISEES, YOU'RE HYPOCRITES, YOU'RE WIDED SEPULCHERS, YOU'RE ALL PAINTED ON THE OUTSIDE, BUT ON THE INSIDE, YOU'RE FULL OF DEAD MAN'S BONES. MAN, JESUS WAS TOUGH. AND YET SOMEHOW OR ANOTHER, PEOPLE TODAY ARE THINKING THAT IF YOU ARE TRULY A CHRISTIAN, WHICH MEANS LIKE CHRIST, LITTLE CHRIST, YOU'RE SUPPOSED TO BE KINDER THAN CHRIST WAS. JESUS WAS TOUGH. JESUS SPOKE THE TRUTH. AND THERE'S A PLACE FOR US TELLING THE TRUTH. NOW, I HAVE COMPASSION ON PEOPLE THAT ARE IN UNPLANNED PREGNANCIES AND THAT THEY'RE GOING TO HAVE FINANCIAL PROBLEMS AND THEY'RE GOING TO HAVE PROBLEMS RAISING THAT CHILD AND THEY'VE ALREADY GOT ENOUGH PROBLEMS WITHOUT HAVING TO HAVE A CHILD. AND I CAN UNDERSTAND THAT IT'S A PROBLEM, BUT MURDER IS NEVER THE ANSWER TO THOSE PROBLEMS. THERE'S ALL KINDS OF THINGS AVAILABLE TO HELP PEOPLE. MAN, THE GOVERNMENT TODAY HAS ACTUALLY MADE IT SO THAT IT PAYS MORE MONEY FOR YOU TO BE SINGLE AND HAVE A CHILD THAN IF YOU'RE MARRIED AND HAVE A CHILD. I DON'T SUPPORT THAT, BUT I AM SAYING THAT THERE ARE THINGS THAT YOU CAN DO TO HELP, BUT MURDER IS NEVER THE ANSWER TO WHATEVER PROBLEMS AN UNPLANNED PREGNANCY HAS. LET ME JUST MAKE THIS ONE THING HERE. SOME PEOPLE SAY, SO YOU HAVE NO EXCEPTIONS. WELL, I'VE ALREADY TALKED ABOUT RAPE AND INCEST. THEY COMPRISE LESS THAN ONE AND A HALF PERCENT OF ALL ABORTIONS, AND SO THAT'S REALLY A STRAW MAN. THERE'S VERY FEW PEOPLE THAT THAT'S AN ISSUE WITH THEM, AND THEY JUST USE THAT TO GET YOU OFF TRACK. BUT EVEN IN THOSE SITUATIONS, I BELIEVE THAT THE CHILD DIDN'T DO ANYTHING WORTHY OF DEATH, SO REGARDLESS OF HOW THE CONCEPTION TAKES PLACE, I DON'T THINK YOU SHOULD BE KILLING THE CHILD FOR IT. BUT HERE'S ONE EXCEPTION, AND THAT IS THAT IF I HAD A FRIEND THAT ACTUALLY HAD A CHILD AND uh, I MAY GET THIS WORDING WRONG. I'M NOT A DOCTOR, BUT I THINK IT WAS A TUBULAR PREGNANCY. AND uh, WHAT THAT MEANT WAS THAT THE CHILD DIDN'T COME DOWN INTO THE PROPER POSITION AND IT WAS GOING TO WIND UP KILLING THE CHILD AND KILLING THE MOTHER. YOU JUST CAN'T HAVE A PREGNANCY THAT WAY. IF YOU HAVE SOMETHING LIKE THAT, I CAN UNDERSTAND TAKING THE LIFE OF THAT CHILD. MY FIRST CHOICE WOULD BE TO JUST BELIEVE THAT A MIRACLE TAKES PLACE AND THAT BABY LIVES, BUT NOT EVERYBODY'S TO THAT PLACE. AND I COULD UNDERSTAND IF IT WAS GOING TO COST THE LIFE OF THE CHILD. I HAD ANOTHER FRIEND WHO ACTUALLY HAD A CHILD DIE IN THEIR WOMB. AND WHAT WERE THEY GOING TO DO? JUST CARRY THIS CHILD AND LET IT DECAY AND WIND UP KILLING THE uh, MOTHER ALSO? IN A SITUATION LIKE THAT, I COULD UNDERSTAND GETTING RID OF THE CHILD BECAUSE IT WAS ALREADY DEAD. BUT, I MEAN, THE ONLY REASON THAT I BELIEVE THAT ANY ABORTION SHOULD HAPPEN IS IF THE CHILD IS ALREADY DEAD, IF IT'S GOING TO WIND UP KILLING THE MOTHER. THERE'S A LOT OF WOMEN THAT IN THE PAST, BEFORE THERE WERE THINGS LIKE C-SECTIONS AND ALL OF THE DIFFERENT MEDICAL THINGS WE'VE GOT, THERE'S A LOT OF WOMEN THAT LITERALLY GAVE BIRTH AND THE CHILD LIVED AND THEY DIED IN THE PROCESS. Uh, I DON'T KNOW. THAT WOULD BE A HARD CALL TO MAKE, BUT uh, IT WOULD HAVE TO BE SOMETHING LIKE THAT. JUST RAPE AND INCEST, AGAIN, THAT CHILD DIDN'T DO ANYTHING TO DESERVE IT. AND SO REGARDLESS OF HOW MUCH SHAME, CONDEMNATION, GUILT, HARDSHIP IT BRINGS, THAT IS NOT JUSTIFICATION FOR MURDER. IF THE CHILD IS ALREADY DEAD OR IF IT'S GOING TO KILL THE MOTHER uh, PHYSICALLY TO HAVE THE BIRTH, WELL, THEN THAT'S A LITTLE BIT OF A SEPARATE ISSUE. BUT ALL OF THESE THINGS THAT I'VE BEEN TALKING ABOUT ARE JUST PEOPLE THAT WILLINGLY CHOOSE TO ELIMINATE THE CHILD BECAUSE OF SOME TYPE OF HARDSHIP. THAT THAT CHILD IS GOING TO IMPOSE. THAT'S WRONG. THAT'S MURDER. AND AGAIN, I SAY THAT THERE'S SOME PEOPLE THINKING, MAN, YOU SHOULDN'T BE SAYING THOSE THINGS. PEOPLE ARE GOING TO BE CONDEMNED. THEY'RE GOING TO FEEL TERRIBLE. I DON'T WANT TO CONDEMN ANYBODY. I LOVE PEOPLE. I'VE GOT MULTIPLE FRIENDS, MANY PEOPLE WHO'VE HAD ABORTIONS, AND I'M NOT AGAINST THEM, AND WE'RE FRIENDS, AND THEY UNDERSTAND THAT I LOVE THEM, BUT THAT DOESN'T MEAN THAT WHAT THEY DID WAS RIGHT. YOU DON'T SOLVE WRONGS BY JUST CHANGING THE STANDARDS. AND SAYING, WELL, IT WASN'T WRONG. NO, THERE IS FORGIVENESS THROUGH THE LORD, BUT WE NEED TO CONFRONT THE FACT THAT ABORTION IS MURDER. LET ME JUST QUOTE THESE PASSAGES OF SCRIPTURE. JESUS, IN THE 22ND CHAPTER OF THE BOOK OF MATTHEW, A LAWYER CAME UNTO HIM, 
THEN ONE OF THEM, WHICH WAS A LAWYER, ASKED HIM A QUESTION, TEMPTING HIM AND SAYING, MASTER, WHICH IS THE GREAT COMMANDMENT IN THE LAW? AND JESUS SAID UNTO HIM, THOU SHALT LOVE THE LORD THY GOD WITH ALL THY HEART AND WITH ALL THY SOUL AND WITH ALL THY MIND, FOR THIS IS THE FIRST AND GREAT COMMANDMENT. AND THE SECOND IS LIKE UNTO IT, THOU SHALT LOVE THY NEIGHBOR AS THYSELF. ON THESE TWO COMMANDMENTS HANG ALL THE LAW AND THE PROPHETS. YOU KNOW WHAT JESUS WAS DOING? HE WAS QUOTING FROM LEVITICUS CHAPTER 19 AND VERSE 18. LET ME JUST READ THIS TO YOU. IT SAYS, THOU SHALT NOT AVENGE NOR BEAR ANY GRUDGE AGAINST THE CHILDREN OF THY PEOPLE, BUT THOU SHALT LOVE THY NEIGHBOR AS THYSELF. I AM THE LORD. THAT'S THE VERSE THAT JESUS QUOTED WHEN HE SAYS THE SECOND GREATEST COMMANDMENT IS LOVE YOUR NEIGHBOR AS YOURSELF. THIS IS WHAT HE QUOTED. BUT DID YOU KNOW IF YOU TAKE IT IN CONTEXT, IT MEANS SOMETHING DIFFERENT THAN THE WAY IT'S BEEN in INTERPRETED BECAUSE MANY PEOPLE WILL SAY, WELL, I JUST LOVE MY NEIGHBOR TOO MUCH. I WOULDN'T SAY ANYTHING ABOUT THEM GETTING AN ABORTION BECAUSE IT MIGHT OFFEND THEM. AND SO YOU'RE GOING TO LET THEM BELIEVE A LIE AND LITERALLY KILL SOMEBODY BECAUSE YOU DON'T WANT TO OFFEND A PERSON? THAT'S NOT LOVE. THAT'S NOT WHAT THIS IS TALKING ABOUT. READ IT IN CONTEXT. BACK UP ONE VERSE. GO TO LEVITICUS CHAPTER 19 AND VERSE 17. IT SAYS, THOU SHALT NOT HATE THY BROTHER IN THINE HEART. THOU SHALT IN ANY WISE REBUKE THY NEIGHBOR AND NOT SUFFER SIN UPON HIM. AND THEN IT SAYS, YOU SHALL LOVE YOUR NEIGHBOR AS YOURSELF. IF YOU PUT IT INTO ITS CONTEXT, THIS IS SAYING THAT YOU CONFRONT A LIE, EVIL, AND IF YOU SEE SOMEBODY ABOUT TO DO SOMETHING WRONG, YOU HAVE AN OBLIGATION, A RESPONSIBILITY TO TELL THEM THE TRUTH. AND IF YOU DON'T DO IT, YOU HATE THEM IN YOUR HEART. THERE ARE PEOPLE WATCHING THIS RIGHT NOW SAY, OH, NO, I LOVE THEM TOO MUCH. REALLY, I'M SAYING THIS IN LOVE. I'M NOT TRYING TO CONDEMN YOU, BUT I'M TRYING TO GET THE TRUTH OUT THERE. THERE ARE SOME OF YOU THAT YOU SAY YOU LOVE YOUR NEIGHBOR TOO MUCH, BUT WHAT IT IS, YOU LOVE YOURSELF TOO MUCH TO SPEAK THE TRUTH AND TAKE THE POTENTIAL REJECTION AND CRITICISM THAT MIGHT COME WITH IT. DID YOU KNOW RIGHT NOW I'M SAYING THINGS THAT I GUARANTEE YOU THERE'S PEOPLE THAT HAVE WATCHED ME FOR YEARS. THERE'S PEOPLE THAT ARE PROBABLY PARTNERS WITH ME THAT WILL QUIT BEING PARTNERS WITH ME BECAUSE I'M SAYING THESE KIND OF THINGS AND IT'S NOT POLITICALLY CORRECT. I'LL BE KICKED OFF OF YOUTUBE AND OFF OF all, TWITTER AND ALL OF THOSE PLACES. I'VE BEEN, YOU KNOW, uh, CENSORED MANY TIMES AND TAKEN OFF OF YOUTUBE. AND, and I DON'T LIKE THE REJECTION AND I DON'T, I don't LIKE IT. BUT I'M TELLING YOU THE TRUTH. AND IF I DON'T SPEAK THE TRUTH, THEN THERE'S GOING TO BE WELL-MEANING PEOPLE WHO WILL JUST CLAM UP AND NOT SAY ANYTHING BECAUSE YOU JUST ARE UNDER THIS FALSE IMPRESSION THAT IT'S LOVE TO NEVER ROCK THE BOAT, TO NEVER SAY ANYTHING THAT OFFENDS A PERSON. AGAIN, I REFER TO A VERSE I'VE ALREADY QUOTED IN uh, GALATIANS 4.16, AM I BECOME YOUR ENEMY BECAUSE I TELL YOU THE TRUTH? YOU NEED TO TELL PEOPLE THE TRUTH. THE TRUTH IS WHAT'S GOING TO SET THEM FREE. LOVE DOESN'T SET PEOPLE FREE. IT'S THE TRUTH SPOKEN IN LOVE THAT SETS PEOPLE FREE. AND WE'VE GOT TO TELL PEOPLE THE TRUTH. YOU KNOW, I'VE GIVEN THIS EXAMPLE BEFORE, BUT IT'S A VERY GOOD EXAMPLE THAT ONE NIGHT WHEN I WAS DRIVING HOME, I LIVE IN THE MOUNTAINS, AND I WAS ON A FOUR-LANE DIVIDED HIGHWAY, AND IT WAS VERY CURVY GOING UP THE MOUNTAINS, AND IT WAS DARK, IT WAS CLOUDY SO THAT THERE WAS NO MOON, NO STARS, AND THERE WAS A FOG. YOU COULDN'T SEE BUT 20, 30 FEET. AND A CAR CAME AROUND ME GOING ABOUT 50, 60 MILES AN HOUR, AND HE DIDN'T GET VERY FAR IN FRONT OF ME, AND I SAW THE BRAKE LIGHTS COME ON, AND THE CAR JERKED TO THE RIGHT, SO I SLAMMED ON MY BRAKES. I CAME TO REST ON THE um, SHOULDER RIGHT NEXT TO HIS CAR, WHICH WAS IN THE RIGHT LANE, AND IN THE LEFT LANE WAS A HORSE THAT HE HAD HIT, AND IT HAD CAVED IN THE WINDSCREEN. HE WAS LAYING THERE WITH BLOOD ALL OVER HIM AND HORSE POOP. <laughs> HE WAS COVERED IN IT. AND uh, ANYWAY, I RAN OVER TO HELP HIM. AND WHILE I WAS TRYING TO HELP HIM, A SUBURBAN CAME AROUND THE CORNER. AND THIS HORSE, HIS LEGS WERE FACING TOWARDS THE ONCOMING TRAFFIC, AND THEY, they ACTED LIKE A RAMP. AND THIS SUBURBAN WAS GOING ABOUT 60 MILES AN HOUR. AND THIS LADY HIT the, AND JUST LAUNCHED THIS CAR UP IN THE AIR. It, IT KNOCKED THE HORSE'S HEAD OFF. WE NEVER DID FIND THE HEAD OF THAT HORSE. I DON'T KNOW WHERE IT WENT. AND IT DECAPITATED THE HORSE, AND IT KNOCKED THE CAR, I DON'T KNOW, FIVE OR TEN FEET IN THE AIR, AND PROBABLY 20 OR 30 FEET. AND THE WOMAN WAS ABLE TO REGAIN CONTROL. I RAN UP THERE, AND HER HEAD HAD KNOCKED A BUBBLE IN THE ROOF OF HER CAR, AND SHE WAS LAYING THERE, HER NECK WAS HURT. 
And as I was trying to help her, I heard other cars coming up the road. So I ran down the road around the corner where nobody could see what had happened. And it was foggy, dark, like I said. And I started jumping out in front of cars. They were going 50 and 60 miles an hour. And because it was so dark and foggy, they couldn't see me until the last minute. And I mean, I had to jump off the road, roll off the road. It was raining and it was wet and it was just a mess. But did you know, what could I have done? I didn't want people to get mad at me. People were honking at me. There's people that waved at me with one finger. I'm sure that they were saying things about me that wasn't nice. But when they got around the corner and saw that all of those lanes were blocked, and so, you know, I bet you many of those people who cursed me probably thanked me. They never did come back and thank me. Nobody helped me. They just went around and kept going. And I did that for 20 or 30 minutes. There's probably 30 cars that I potentially saved a wreck from happening. And I agree, I didn't like people, you know, there's probably some women that were thinking, what's this man doing out here flagging a car down in the middle of the night? And they probably had bad thoughts about me. I don't like people to think about me that way. But if you, if I hadn't have done something, I would have hated those people. That's the terminology that's used in Leviticus 19, 17. If you don't tell a person the truth, if a person is contemplating murdering a child and all of the physical problems it will do to them, the emotional problems it will do to them, and if you don't tell them the truth, well, then the truth is that you love yourself more than you love them. Now, there's a right and a wrong way to do it. You don't have to come in with both guns blazing. You don't have to come in and condemn them and say, God hates you. But you do need to tell people the truth. I've been speaking the truth this week in love. I'm not mad at any of you. And I'm sure that there are many, many people watching this program who you've had an abortion. You know somebody that had. Your children has had an abortion or people in your church have had an abortion. I'm sure that this affects just about every single person that's watching these programs. And I'm sure that this has brought some things to the surface that are unpleasant to some of you. But I'm telling you the truth because it's only the truth you know that sets you free. And there is forgiveness. You know, we've got a number on our screen and we're going to be offering this product, but also you can call. And if, if you recognize that, man, you were wrong and that you have killed a child, there is forgiveness available to you. And we've got people standing by at our phones 24 hours a day, seven days a week that will pray with you. We'll give you these products uh, and help you any way we can pray with you. So please take advantage of that. And remember that today is our last day. I've got this thing has 11 weeks worth of my interviews that I've done here on television with people who survived abortions, people who have been affected by abortions, uh, people who have crusaded against it, some of the heroes that have overturned the Roe versus Wade decision. This is really good. And then I've also got a DVD and CD, just single DVD and CDs that uh, are this week's programs in those formats. And then we also have a USB that will have this week's programs on there. And I encourage you, if for no other reason, even if you've agreed with everything I said, you need to get this and be able to share it with other people. We need to win this fight against abortion on the individual level, changing people's opinion. So please listen to our announcer. Please call or write today. Discover what the Bible says about abortion when you get Andrew's brand new teaching titled, Life at Conception. Andrew's teaching, Life at Conception, is available in a CD, DVD, or as a USB made from our daily television broadcast. Each of these valuable resources is available for a gift of any amount when you contact us. This entire series is also available for audio download absolutely free from our website. Andrew is also offering the Choose Life USB. Included on this flash drive, you'll find many more interviews and testimonies relating to abortion. This Choose Life USB flash drive will be accompanied by the Observing All Things booklet that contains many statistics and scriptures with regard to abortion and other social issues. Or you can get these products as part of the Life at Conception package, which includes the Choose Life USB with your choice 
of the Life at Conception CD, DVD, or USB. The Life at Conception package has a catalog value of $27, but you can receive all of these valuable resources today for just $20. Go to awmi.net to see all the ways you can get these products. We also want to remind you of Andrew's Living Commentary software. The Living Commentary includes more than 50 years of Andrew's Bible study notes and personal encounters with God. Get Andrew's Living Commentary today for $120. We want to say a special thank you to the Grace Partners of Andrew Womack Ministries. Your gifts make it possible to put free ministry materials into the hands of many people in need. If you're not already a Grace Partner, we ask you to pray about becoming one today. You can become a Grace Partner through our website at awmi.net. While there, you can discover more product details and download additional free resources. You can also order resources or receive prayer by calling our helpline at 719-635-1111. Our Caris Bible College, I believe, is second to none as far as the spiritual material that's being put out and the impact that's being made on students. But did you know our facilities are wanting? We actually had over 550 students that couldn't come this year because they didn't have housing. We need to start providing housing, activity center, cafeteria, all kinds of things. And in order to do that, I need a lot of new partners. I ask you to go to awmi.net slash campus and check it out and become a partner with Karis Bible College today. In the beautiful town of Woodland Park, Karis Bible College has been changing people's lives for over 25 years. The people here are so like-minded. They want to help you grow. These are people who genuinely care about you. They want the best for you. Be prepared to be blown away with the teachings. It's not just a season in your life. There's no way you can't change. You can't really go wrong going to a place that you get to sit and listen to the Word for four hours a day. Being under the Word that much just allowed God to pour so much into me. If you feel supernatural peace about coming to Karis, that's God. I know you're like, how, when, where, all these questions, just do it. The Lord will provide. I was doubting and second guessing it, but when I took that step of faith, immediately like things were provided. Just being around like-minded believers, teachers who are there for you and ready to talk to you at any moment and answer your questions, there's just nothing like it. Just follow the leading of the one that you serve and that's always gonna be the right direction to go. I've got some great news to share with you, and that is that we have now expanded our phone center hours to 24-7. Anytime you wanna call us, we're gonna be open to receive your calls. We've been expanding gradually, and this is a goal that I've been shooting at, and I'm excited because, you know, sometimes problems, needs don't just wait until business hours to happen, you may need to call in the middle of the night and we can now serve you 24-7 on our Andrew Womack Ministries helpline. Have you checked out the Inside Story yet? It's a great way for you to get an inside look of what is happening at Andrew Womack Ministries. With over six years of interviews, there's a lot to get excited about. Check out this month's featured story today, only at awmi.net.